Greetings from the New England Highway. I'm in a place in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I'm between I think Warwick and no, I'm just past Stanthorpe coming into Tenterfield. Yeah, Tenterfield's about 40 k's away. So when I come up, or well, whenever I travel from Brisbane to the Central Coast, or vice versa, I... I always come up the, the highway, the main coastal road, and then come home the New England highway, or the other way around, just, just whatever, whatever suits me at the time, you know. Um, but I like to just mix it up a little bit, so when you come up, the advantage of the coastal road is that it's the, the road's a lot bigger, it's like a modern freeway, and um, the speed limit's either 100 or 110, and it's, it's shorter. It's about, I think the, the the coastal road's about 800 k's and the way I'm doing it today is 900 k's. So you might think I'm a little bit crazy, but and, and the road the, the road's a lot better. But th this way is, um, it's, it's longer and the road's not as good, but it's, it's a lot more scenic. You see a lot more sort of things. It's, you see more of the outback and stuff. There's less people on the road and there's a lot less police. It's a lot more peaceful. You can just sort of just get on with it. You haven't got people up your ass and you haven't just got constant speed cameras and constant police and just this constant feel that you're doing something wrong. So it's a nice drive, but it's it's longer. Like I'm, I'm sort of strapping myself in for 13 hours. It took 12. It took 12 to come up. And But I don't know. It might not take as long because there's not as much road works as what there was on the other road. So... Who knows? It doesn't really matter. I enjoy the day and however long it takes, however long it takes. That's sort of how I do it. Um, so Brisbane was fun. It was a really good trip. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed every minute of it, to be honest. It was, um, I, I, I got, I got to, I don't know, just, just to, just to settle a, a couple of things that I, you know, a couple of questions that were in my heart things that didn't make sense to me about my journey and about how I found, you know, to be where I am now and how it all started and, you know, got to meet a couple of subscribers, which was nice and just just had another, I don't know, seemingly another brush with the enemy and this one's even more complex than I could ever imagine that would ever be with the enemy, but I don't know, you just look at it each time it happens, you just look at it and you just go, well, I don't know. I must be hot property, and when I say that, it's not about ego, it's not about that at all, but in this spiritual fight, I just, I feel as though I am, because they just keep coming, um, and they just don't want me to be in truth, and that's cool, that's cool, I just learn from them every time, because as much as you don't want me in truth, that makes me more determined to find it, and with each time you come, you just, you, you, you well, what do you say, your motives, uh, just gives me more wisdom. You know, because you just expose yourself and it just gives me more wisdom in my walk. So, um, I, I don't know. I don't want you to keep coming. I don't I don't care for the enemy. I never want to hear from a Freemason for as long as I live. But I know where I am now, I, it's just going to be constant. So, but, but yeah, caught up with the niece and nephew and met the brother's granddaughter for the first time. And it was just, it was just a really, really nice trip. I really enjoyed it. It was nice to get away. Um. And, and, and I don't know, just break things up a little bit and it's just I come back and I sort of reflected of, of where I was last Wednesday when I left and where I am now in my walk with the Lord and I've just grown even more in the Lord thanks to this trip and the Lord led me here and I even had a brush with Satan there last night. It was all about the grand affliction and I was tempted. I was tempted there last night. But no. No, that part of my life is past. That part of my life is past. So uh, it was nice to be able to just overcome that without much willpower at all. It was just like didn't, it wasn't even tempted to be honest. So that's that's really nice to think that I've got to that that place in, in my walk. I wanted to just talk about something today. Just this concept that I'm sort of throwing around in my head that I've talked about on previous videos that I've never really touched on in a video on its own. So just this whole concept about the time loop that I'm talking about and just how we keep returning to the same point. So Genesis 1-2, um, yes, yes. There's a reason why God's got me obsessed with this, with this, um, with this, 
um, verse of the Bible. I sort of started there too because I've made the decision it's going to be Yahuwah and Yeshua from now on. So forgive me if I do lax in that because I am, as you see me now, this is the point where I've decided that I'm going to change that. So I will fall into, you know, when you first found out the Earth's not a globe and like me yesterday, you know, I've known it for two years and I still said planet. It's just all of these years of conditioning. It's hard to get, get rid of it. I don't know, it just, there's still a part of me that just goes, really, I'm not calling him Jesus anymore, it just seems a little bit strange. So Yahuwah and Yeshua it is, um, and as I say that, I'm really wrestling with who's who at the moment, because right through the Bible, I'm just starting to think that God could be Yeshua, Jesus, um, and the Lord is, is Yahuwah, um, God. So I, 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 I'm wrestling with that, and it would seem to me, when you look at the, the at John 1.1, 1, 1, the word, word is, is, is referring to Yeshua. So it's it's all very confusing at the moment, but confusion's good, confusion's good, because that means it's just another piece of truth that I'm seeking, and, and I will find it. I'm, I'm just I'm just blown away by the day with how much I'm uncovering about creation, and, and why we're here, and what the world is, and we're not I'm uncovering, what the Lord's uncovering for me, to me. He's, 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 un, he's just uncovering all of this wisdom for me, and um, confusion is a good state because it means that you will resolve, you want to resolve that confusion in because you just, all I want is truth. My number one focus is truth and the reason why I glorify the name of Yeshua and Yahuwah is because they happen to be truth, the three of them are just the same thing. So Genesis 1-2, and darkness was without form and, and void and, and, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. To me, that's that's playing out time and time again in the Bible. So I, I believe that's where we are now. So that that that's, that just describes to me where we are now, a place that's wicked, without hope. It's dark. Um, they're, they're, it's desolate. It, wickedness abounds. Um, all of it. It's just because the masses don't see it, um, and we do see it, and, it, and it's not tangible and there's not wars and it's not all the buildings are not falling down and all that but we see it don't we like I just drove through a town there it was like a winery and the main winery you'll be surprised to know was called Mason Wines I know shock horror and the little A bit in the, in the middle where the two lines meet in the triangle that, that was missing in the logo that it wasn't there so it was just a it was just an upside down pyramid for the A you know uh, it's just it's just dark, it's wicked, and it's no hope, and it's desolate, and it's just ruled by by dark forces. But anyway, as Genesis 1 and 2 go on, well, Genesis 1 goes on there, the Lord represented himself, you know. He, 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 he showed us the light, he brought light into the world, and he saw that it was good, and he saw that it was very good. Yeah, that's the Lord coming back into the world, and then what happens? The fallen angels fall. Uh, they inflict mankind in, in early Genesis there, and how does that end up? That ends up just before the ark, a place that resembles Genesis 1-2, uh, where we are today. And what's the result of that? God, the Lord, Yahuwah, destroys the, destroys the whole earth with a flood, and boom. And then we start again. So Noah, Noah uh, represents the new man, the new Adam. Um, the, 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 um, Yahuwah comes back into the world. I, I, I've got a feeling this could be by the by the vineyard, and that's what the skins represented, and that's that's when uh, when Ham stole the skins. That's when the cycle started again, because Noah in the vineyard and Noah being drunk in the vineyard in the tent. Um, it, that rep well, it's a sixty zone. I better I better slow down. We can't be speeding now, can we? That's no no no. Because why can't I speed? Because the sign says so. Um, uh, yeah, so the, 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 so, um, the, the Yahuwah come back into the world and he presented light of Noah in the tent, um, being drunk in his works in the in the vineyard, being naked in the tent, and then Ham stole the garments, and that's where the Nephilim was reintroduced, and it all started again. And how did that end up? That ended up with Nimrod being having the garments, um, the wisdom, the fallen angels again, flicking man through the, through the garments, through the skins. Um, and then that, that created the Tower of Babel. Um, what did Yahuwah do? You, what did Yahuwah do? Yahuwah, I'm just studying. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just uh, stuttering there for a minute because I'm at the New South Wales border. Woo woo. So I'm back in my home state in the Tenerfield Shire. 
So just having a look at a sign here, what have we got? Uh, it's not gonna tell me, but I'm like 200 k's from Armadale. I'm like, I just went past the sign there before where, where it said that I'm 800 k's from Sydney, so I've got a long way to go. Um, but yeah, but it created the Tower of Babel, so that, that resembled, again, a time that resembles now, that resembles Genesis 1-2. Um, and and what did Yahuwah do? Yahuwah scattered them, he destroyed the Tower of Babel, he scattered them all, and then he created Adam, which is the seed of his people, um, the 12 tribes of Israel, the seed that, 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 that goes all the way to, to Yeshua, um, the seed that already existed, I think, because it goes back to Adam. Um, but he, he brought Abraham out of the darkness, out of the wicked time, and he presented the light, he presented the new hope. And then that descended again, that descended again into madness, I'm pretty sure, uh, when the, the reign of King David come up, the time of the judges, when King David started to rule, and the, the, the 12 tribes of Israel, the Israelites were just wicked, they were into their false gods, they were into their, you know, into worshipping their, 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 their golden calf and all that. So then what does what does Yahuwah do? Out of that darkness, he brings out King David. And again, from that period, it just descends into madness again with the with the 12 tribes of Israel doing it again, going into, brings them a saviour, I think, brings them a messiah, brings them a messiah in, in King David. I think that's the difference there. And then it, the same thing happens and what happens, he exiles them into Babylon. Um, it, it, he exiles them into Babylon and, 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 there's, and, and again, the world resembles a place that's dark, dark without form. Um, wickedness rules, Genesis 1, 2, once again, like where we are today. And then what happens? He brings Jesus, um, Yeshua. Yeshua comes to the earth and dies on the cross for all of our sins. He's the great, he's the great light again. He's, he's, the, he's, the, he's the healer. He's the healer of everything, which brings us to today. And where are we today? We're back at Genesis 1, 2 today. And what are we doing? We're waiting for the light again. We're waiting for the light to come back into the world. And that's, um, and that's the return of, you, of Yeshua. And I just believe today what we've got, us in the body of Christ, we have the skins. We have the skins of Adam and Eve in the garden. We've got them back. We've got the skins back. He's our hope. We're naked in the world without those skins. And we know we're naked. Um, and we've got the skins. We've got the garments that, that, that's been passed down to us now. So that's sort of where I'm at with all that. And to me, it just it's the same thing just evolving over and over again. So is there a time loop? Don't know, today I'm thinking not, today I'm thinking not, but it is the same story repeating over and over. And we are, you have a look at, you have a look at Revelation 21. Revelation 21, it's interesting because this is where I'm starting to think their sun worship might come from. Because in, in Genesis 21, in Revelation 21, um, the, new, the new heaven and earth has no sun and moon. It's got no sun and moon in the new heaven and earth. So I'm thinking because the Garden of Eden to me is the new heaven. It's the same thing. The Garden of Eden, um, the, the, the earth between sort of the end of creation and, and before. So I think Genesis 2-4, so that time between Genesis 2-4 and Genesis 3-1, I'm pretty sure that's that's exactly the same place. The Garden of Eden is the new heaven and earth as described in, in, in Revelation 21 because this is all about just um, rejuvenating ourselves, returning us to our previous state that we were in the garden. And that's why I think the story, that story of, of Adam and Eve is a story for us all. It's a parable for us all. Um, but there was no, there's no sun and moon in the new heaven and earth in Revelation 21. And when man were cast out, so there, was no, there was no sun and moon, I don't think, in, in, in the Garden of Eden. I'm not sure I, what, what does scripture say. I haven't got it in front of me right now. Um, but it's clearly not there in the new heaven and earth. So maybe it wasn't there in the Garden of Eden as well. Uh, because he does say the two great lights that rule the sky. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know whether that, really, that, that that is the sun and moon. I'm not sure. And it is it is before it. I know it is before it. Um, but anyway, but anyway, that that, that I, I would have thought that when Adam and Eve first come out of the garden, the first sunrise and first seeing the moon, probably would have given them a bit of a fright. And that sort of represents Satan's realm, doesn't it? Satan's realm, his earth. He's been cast out of heaven. He's no longer in heaven. He's here. He's stuck here. But then again, in Job, he does go to and fro from heaven and earth. So I don't know. Uh, but this is sort of where the um, where, where the sun worship come from because the sun the sun won't be there. The sun won't be there in the new heaven and earth. 
know it was the moon, and that's what the Muslims, um, that's what the Muslims worship. And clearly, they're going to use the Muslim faith to bring in their new world order. It's all it, it, Barack Obama, who I believe is going to be the Antichrist, who is the Antichrist. He's he's saying, you know, you can't defile the Muslim faith and all this sort of nonsense. And the Muslims are just moon worshippers. You can see it in all their flags, like the Pakistan flag and the Muslim flag, all of them. It's all about, and I think the Indian flag has got a great big sun worship logo in the middle of it. Um, so it's Satan's world, and when the sun, when we've got the new heaven and earth, there'll be no sun, there'll be no moon. So this is why they're worshiping the sun. That's sort of where I'm at with all that. So you can see the sun's shining brightly on me this morning. It's a beautiful, beautiful day here in the middle of the wilderness. Um, um, as I say, I'm coming up to Tenerfield. It's about. It's only about 10 k's away now, so might stop for a cuppa. Might stop for a cuppa. I'm getting a bit tired. Um, yeah, and then just continue the drive home. It's a fun day. It's an enjoyable day. It's just nice to be just by myself, by myself, doing a video, doing a video. So I'm talking to my subs, I suppose, so I'm not totally by myself. But, yeah, that's sort of where I'm at with all that this morning. Just a new thought I'd put it out there because it is a diary, and I just feel as though... The Lord's bringing a whole heap of stuff together for me at the moment. It's quite intense. It's quite intense where I am in my, in my walk at the moment. I just, I, I'm just floored every day, and I just thank the Lord every day for picking me, for choosing me um, to, to, to go on this walk. It's you have your hard days, you have your hard days, and you have your days where you just feel like you're ten miles high, um, and you and, and you, you're just not on of the earth anymore. And other days you just feel like you, 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 you're within the cesspit. So. Um, today, today I feel today I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling I'm just thankful to the Lord, thankful to the Lord for all the wisdom He's showing me. And you know, it's got to be for something. It can't be like, okay, Brett, He's not a cruel God. Here, okay, Brett, here's all this information. Here's all this wisdom. Here's where you are. This is where you're stuck at the moment. And now you've got to go back into the world and participate in the system in the beast. No, it's not like that. He gave me the redundancy. He's given me all this wisdom. He's given me all this time for a reason. And every day, even though I still don't know what my calling is, every day it just gets clearer and clearer. All right, guys, that's me. That's me from the wilderness. Um, all blessings, all blessings go out to my brothers and sisters. And all praise goes to Yeshua, the King.